What's up guys, that really gross guy here. We are back in Elden Ring. Don't mind the dog in the back. He's on the bridge, the dog. Yeah, anyways, we're back in Elden Ring. I'm going to be showing you guys a very early game. And I mean, you don't have to kill any enemies to get to this location if you don't want to. Um, and this is a very, very early game farming area. Fantastic. Some people are boasting as much as 130,000 runes in one hour. Now, you'd have to be pretty adamant uh, and, and going crazy to probably amount that much. However, it is definitely possible if you have uh, a decent amount of gear and get in here. However, like I said, this area you do not actually have to kill a single enemy to get here if you take the right path. I will show you that path here in just a little bit, but I do want to show you a little demonstration of how to get to this area. Now, this is a decent size. You can go all the way up to that building up top, and you will find these really small uh, little characters, uh, these enemies, um, in this entire area. There is a big bad boss up top, so you probably want to stay away from him. And like you saw earlier, we also have a dog on the bridge, and you may want to avoid him as well. But the idea is these little guys tend to stay fairly isolated in this area. Most of them walk on their own um, pretty good distance away from each other, and they're fairly easy to kind of isolate and take down um, independently, especially at night. Um, finisher moves are pretty much the way to go to do this. Um, it's just going to get you a bunch of damage very quick, and then you can follow up and take these guys down um, very quickly. <clears throat> the reason why that's important is because up until around level 30 or so, these guys can one-shot you very easily. If they don't one-shot you and they use some of their other uh, abilities, uh, their, their melee attacks, they can pretty quickly get you down to nothing. They're, they're kind of quick. But anyways, um, I'm going to show you just an example of, of course, I'm having to jump to get out of that little spot. Uh, here's an example. I am a character with nothing but the starter buckler weapon and the knife. These guys have a little over a thousand hit points and that's how you get in there and take those guys down. Uh, get a finisher in. The dagger is very good at just very quick frantic hits and taking these guys down and that bleed really helps in there as well. Now the dagger isn't necessary. I've used a 200 two-handed greatsword to take these guys down and because they do so much damage when you do that lethal strike, um, they're pretty easy to take down there as well. The issue is where you get into weapons that are kind of in the middle where they're a little slow to swing and they don't do a ton of damage is where honestly you're more likely to run out of stamina and have these guys be able to get their shots in on you than anything. Uh, there are a couple different variants of these enemies, um, one of which has a, I believe it's called a Krisama. That is, that's what this guy is actually using right, right now in front of me. It is basically a scythe with uh, a chain attached to like a mace and it has pretty good range. Him getting the, the attacks in on you is likely going to kill, like I said, any character below level 30 or so, um, and that's a problem. They also have another ranged like attack. They basically send out like these three saw blades in your direction. Let's see if I can actually get this guy to do it. Uh, he also has the little Kurisama weapon. Uh, which, as you can see, has decent range. Decent range. Uh, if he gets two good follow-up attacks on you, it probably is going to get you killed. Um, if I can get him to do this other, other ability, this one right here, good range. If a single one of those blade hits you, 
like I said, likely going to kill you in one single shot. So avoid that if possible. Stealth is key. Uh, getting that that lethal in there, the lethal attack in there is key. And then just damaging them before they can get an attack off is ideal. So uh, if you do come in here, I honestly think that you could come in here um, even well after level 40 and do a pretty good job of... Uh, farming these guys and leveling up but uh, early game this is incredible it's fantastic so without further ado what I'm going to do um, like I said a thousand souls per takedown it's like 1094 per takedown um, we'll show another example of that right here but I will show you how you can start the game right off the bat not kill a single enemy and get all the way to this location. I will point out a couple of key items that I do pick up on the way to get here, and those are also fantastic uh, things for a new player to get. So, um, without further ado, you saw taking down four guys, getting approximately 4,400 runes in just a few minutes. All right, guys, so here we are literally walking right out the beginner area into the open world with a samurai. I figured I might as well get in and try uh, to level up a character that I have no time with so that I can, you know, maybe fall in love with a new playstyle. Um, I'm going to basically kind of speed this up a little bit so that this is easier for you, easier to di digest uh, and show you how to get to the uh, the farm area a um, couple key items we will pick up along the way I will mention and a teleportation device that we will use to get specifically where we want to be but you will see my path here All right, so we are arriving at this church you can see here. I took the road, or I took the areas away from the roads because you were able to see several instances of some uh, impending doom. A giant, there is a big group of enemies just under those ruins, and obviously the horsemen on the bridge. I did this at night. And there is the much more difficult horseman guarding that bridge. Uh, avoid everything to get here. Zero kills to get to this spot. What we have in this church is a couple key items. First off, we have the grace period that obviously you would want to uh, acquire or attune to. We have right over here some items the flask of wondrous physic the great thing about this item is it allows you to combine 
uh, different items so that your fla this specific flask does different things for you. For instance, on my main profile, my flask will give me health as well as a stamina regen. It can also do health and like a buff of some kind. Um, and you can basically create a custom flask, which is really, really nice, especially later in the game. And then, of course, over here we have another item, a sacred tear. That is going to make your flasks that much more potent, more viable, heal a little bit more, or restore a bit more of your uh, skill points. From this church, what you're going to want to do is go around the back side of the church. You're going to see uh, this little watery area. And you're going to walk this pond over here to the right. All the way up against this mountainside you see here. And behind this brush and these trees, you're going to encounter this portal. Take this portal to a new location. And you are going to be right on the cusp of this uh, this, this, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, farming area. You're going to arrive at this Grails, Grails, Dragon Barrow, whatever you want to call it, right in front of this gigantic door. Don't go this way. For obvious reasons, don't go this way. You will later, but you're going to go around this guy. Right off the bat, now that you are here, enter this building. Upon ent entering the bestial sanctum, you have some character way at the end. Don't worry about him. He is not a threat to you at the moment. And access this grace location. Now, from now on, you are able to fast travel here and respawn here if you would like. Hello. You have been testing me. That is wonderful. I really don't want to go to the round table right now because I am showing my friends how to do a thing. Thank you. Anywho, when you leave this building, like I said, avoid this gigantic monster of death and destruction and go around. You can go around to the left or the right. I feel like the left is the easiest option uh, to, to go. At this point, you are in the area where you can start farming. I will show you basically a quick way down to the other grace that uh, I showed you at the beginning, as well as a golden seed that you can pick up to help increase your number of flasks. When you come down here, there are going to be, uh, I think there's a guy off to the left here somewhere. It is dark. I do not see him currently, but he is over here to the left somewhere. You could take him down for 1,094 runes. There is also someone up here on the road somewhere. Maybe I have already spooked him. I sure hope I have not. Um, oh, yep, there's one right there. Anywho, these are the guys you're going to be farming. There are plenty of them to farm. Uh, there's at least 20 in the area. Um, there's like three that are grouped up way over there somewhere. There are two that kind of walk close to each other, which I typically avoid them because they could potentially, you know, tell each other that they're, you know, hanging out. And I think there's two more over there that kind of hang out close to each other. Other than that, most of these guys are fairly isolated and they're easy to pick off. For instance, we have this little guy right here. Oh, look at that. I managed to not backstab him. This could be a problem. Anyways, fortunately... Oh, yep, this could be a problem. Um, fortunately, this is a fairly quick attacking sword with the ability to cause some bleed. Ooh, that was very close. That's a good example of why you want to do finishers or backstabs. But you'll head down here and you can see a familiar location. The bridge with the dog on it, as well as this grace location. 
So there you have it. Literally was able to get here without killing a single enemy in the game. And you are now able to farm, according to many people, up to 130,000 runes an hour. I managed to get, I'd say, casually playing, probably 70 to 80 runes with a brand new character that can't one-shot these guys. So there you have it. Hopefully this did help you. Let me know, uh, you know, a little thumbs up, maybe a comment down below uh, what you think, if this helped you or it did not. Um, I would love the feedback. And if you are playing this game and you are f much further into it, do you have a new farming location? Um, if you were familiar with this farming location, how long did you use it before you moved on to a new one? I'm very curious to know, and thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to join my Let's Play if you would like to see that. I'm having a blast playing this game. It's phenomenal, and uh, hopefully I will see you guys again in another video. Blah!